Hello and welcome to part 13 of this tutorial series. In this part we are going to discuss job stores. Up until now our jobs have been stored in RAM. Every time our application shuts down our jobs would be wiped out. Storing the jobs in RAM could work for some small application that has some simple jobs and recreates them when it boots up. But for more complex applications, especially web applications, storing jobs in RAM won't work as you would lose all your jobs if the application shuts down. If you want the jobs to be persistent, then we need to use the ADO.NET job store or ADO job store. This will use ADO.NET and store the data in our database of choice. There are a couple of providers supported like SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, SQLite, Firebird and MPG SQL. In this video, we are going to see how to implement the job store using SQL Server. In order to use SQL Server as our job store, first we need to create a database. Let's head out to our management studio and create a new database. Let's name it Quart and save it. Quart will not create the tables by default, so we need to create the tables before we can connect Quart's library to our database. The SQL scripts for creating the tables can be found on the project on GitHub. Let's go to the project on GitHub. Inside Quart.net there is a folder called database. Inside that there is a folder called tables. And we need to get the tables SQL server. Let's copy this file and let's head back to our management studio. Let's execute the query against our newly created database. Once the tables are created, now it's time to connect our database to our library. To be able to connect Quartz to our SQL server, we need to set a couple of properties on our startup.cs class. Let's go to our startup.cs class and in the method configure quartz, in the props name value collection, we need to add a couple properties. First, we need to tell quartz about the job store type we are using. We do that using the property quartz.jobstore.type and with the value quartz.implementation.adojobstore.jobstore.ex and quartz. Next, we need to tell it what data source to use. To tell it about the data source, we use the data source property with a value of default. Next, we need to set a provider. To set a provider, we need to use quartz.datasource.default, which was the name we gave it on our previous property, that provider. In our case, we are using SQL Server. If you are using anything other than SQL Server, you need to set that. Next, we need to set the connection string. Next, we need to set the connection string. To set the connection string, we use quartz.datasource.default, which was the name of the data source, that connection string, and we give it our connection string, which is our local host with an integrated security and a database name quartz. Now that we set all these properties, we need to run the application. Let's start our job. We get a serialization exception because we are using binary serializer. To get around this, we need to use JSON serializer. Let's go ahead and install our JSON serializer as we manage packages. Type in quartz.serialization.json. Let's install the package. Once the package is installed, let's head out to our configuration and change from binary to JSON. Another thing that we need to do is change where we start our scheduler. Because we use a custom job factory, if we start our scheduler right away here and we set our job factory here, then the application will try to resume all our jobs and fail because it does not know yet about ASP.NET Core job factory. To get around this, we set our scheduler after we have set our job factory. Let's remove this code from here and move it under here. Start our application again, fire our job, and we see that our job gets executed. Now, let's stop the application and start it again to see if our job starts. 
as you can see our trigger starts executing the jobs because now it knows about the jobs and the triggers because they are stored in our SQL database. That is all on job stores. You can do the same with other database servers. All you have to do is change the connection string and the provider names. Thank <laughs> you.